making the fight a little more than anticipated. Marquez in the traditional Mexican colors. Haka in the red and blue. He is a southpaw. Marquez says no words for the last six fighters who he's faced have been southpaws. Now he gets a little nervous. He's got to go up against a conventional fighter. And there you see Marquez land a straight right. Marquez is fighting a lot more aggressive than he normally and punching with a lot more thought. He seems to be very determined to be impressive tonight. He does, but I'll tell you one thing. Haka has fast hands, and he's making Marquez's hands look a little slower, I think, than they normally look. Yeah, but Marquez is going for power tonight, I think, more so than technical. Marquez got burned two fights ago. He lost a decision that more than a few observers thought he should have won in Indonesia against Chris John, who is undefeated. Manny mentioned he's going for power. As, as you mentioned earlier, friend, he even acknowledges he's looking for the KO tonight. He, I never heard him say something like that. Yeah, and he's got caught with a beautiful straight left right there by Haka. Haka doing oh. work to the body, but Marquez spins him around and now goes to town in the corner. This could turn out to be a much more exciting fight than we all expected. Uh, it was a left hook from Marquez. Marquez and Haka trading blows, and we're just two minutes into the first round. You know, I thought that Haka was going to be more of a boxer looking at the films of him in the past, but he's seemingly trying to be a power puncher tonight, the same as Marquez. It means we have a good, exciting fight on our hands. Marquez doubles up with the left hand and unloads a right in a nice combination. He's fighting a fast southpaw from the Philippines, but this one doesn't hit like a ton of bricks as Pacquiao does. Nice stuff here in the opening round of a schedule 12 rounder between Juan Manuel Marquez and Jim Rex Aka. Jim Rex is trying to land almost the same identical straight left through the center that Pacquiao was so effective with when he fought Marquez. When we go to the corner of Haka's straight left from Haka, then he put Haka in the corner and started to unload himself. That's 18, landing 18 out of 54. Haka, 18 out of 80. I thought that replay was a great illustration of technically how good Marquez is. On offense, you saw it there, straight right hand. Excellent uppercut, left hook. There you see how Harold Letterman scored the first round, and he gave it to the youngster from the Philippines, Haka. This fight was supposed to take place just over a month ago. Haka had some visa problems. And in between now and then, he has joined Golden Boy Promotions, I find. But I think that it was Marquez who did some of the hurting in that round, although Couldn't tell if Marquez just was off balance or if he got rocked. Seems to be steady on his feet now. But Marquez is a, a wee tad slower than he normally is, I think, because he's trying to fight for power tonight. Normally he's a lot faster, a lot more elusive with his upper body movement. And the way he's fighting right now, this is anybody's fight because he himself got caught with a right hook, even though. He might have been off balance. It could have been a facial knockdown still. He just landed a straight right. Nope. And, and also, Haka just landed a left a little uppercut inside. <laughs> Here we go, That's man. <laughs> you know, going into this fight, it doesn't seem like this is the kind of fighter that would prepare you for Manny Pacquiao. And yet, Manny, it looks to me like Haka's fighting similarly to Pacquiao in many respects. A little slower version, not as intense, not as fierce, but still definitely a version of Pacquiao. And main thing is not the punching power. There is a cut over the left eye, I believe, of Jim Rex Haka. Marquez unloads. A right hand. There you see what Marquez does so well. He leaned back and he counterpunched with his left. 
But Hawk is kind of punching him also sometimes when he comes in. By simply moving back, which is interesting because I thought he would be moving around a lot more, but Hawk is just taking a little step back sometimes, just enough to let Marquez miss. Over time, class tells. Let's see if it tells in this fight, if Marquez can make adjustments and start to pull away. Pretty impressive against Geronimo Hernandez. It was a uh, first round TKO. He's fighting on the undercard of uh, Pacquiao Morales two. He, he's given Marquez a lot of problems because of the little step that he pulls back a lot, just enough to make Marquez get out of position himself. Instead of throwing punches and just staying there, he punches it in, he pulls back just enough, like he does right there. Nice and wide left hook uh, shook Paca. Manny, I've heard you describe Tito Chidad in his prime as a killer robot. He figured out what he needed to do in the first few rounds, and then he executed. And uh, Marquez throughout his career has reminded me of that. It's still early in the fight. Generally, he starts to dominate as the rounds go on. I don't know if he's going to be that effective. This guy seems to have his number here tonight. This kid is fighting a very intelligent fight. Very elusive up in his upper body right there. Very focused. And Marquez cannot get a good consistent rhythm going with any combinations. But it was blocked with such force from Marquez that it, I think it did a little something. And I think Ditto on that one. Yeah. It was blocked, but there was some uh, pepper coming off that from Marquez. And I've seen Haka miss a little bit more in this round than he was earlier. Yeah, but one thing we know that once Haka slows down at all, Marquez is going to step it up, take it to another level. See Marquez yeah. applying a little more pressure here. It's not only that, but Hawker was always keeping that little distance between them. He's not that effective with it now, I think, because he's tiring a little bit. But he was always pulling back. Now Marquez is beginning to get his range now. Marquez showed you a little bit of the speed that he says he has left. He looks like a slower fighter to me than he did. He looks slower to me. Ago. I agree. He looks slower. He looks seasoned, very professional, but still slow. At least compared to this guy. Marquez starting to settle into the fight now. Haka unloads an uppercut. Haka's punch output slows down just a little bit. Marquez trying with as is Jim Rex Haka. Let's bring in Harold Letterman and see how he has to the fight. Uh, okay, Fred. Two rounds to one. 29-28. Jim Rex Hacker. That, that first round was very, very close. Could have gone either way. I was really surprised at the style of Jim Rex Hacker. I mean, this is two guys standing there fighting on a dime. In any case, the second round, Hacker stacking him. I thought he won that. But round three, one man, one man, one mark is his best round of the fight. Two to one. Hacker. not uncommon for Marquez to start slowly. It is uncommon to see him fight with this kind of passion. He seems to be not only fighting aggressively, but like he really is trying to take this guy's head off. Both fighters now opening up a little bit here in the fourth round. If he had matched this kind of passion in previous fights, he maybe then would have gotten the fights that he wanted to have. Or perhaps he wouldn't have won some of those fights and not been where he, you know, not okay. been as dominant as he was. All right, touche. That's following a long career where he was explosive. Yes. Nice overhand right from Juan Manuel Marquez.
and now uh, trying to lead with the left hand. Hawker doesn't have the punching power, Marquez, but he's fighting a very good fight, and thus far, this round, Simon is winning the round. Normally against Southpaw's Manny, guys are on guard for that straight left hand and don't see the right hook. Marquez seems to be caught with that straight left hand a little more than you'd anticipate. Yeah, Why? I know that I'm really beginning to have a lot of second thoughts about the fight with Pacquiao because Pacquiao punches with a lot more speed and power than the Hawker. On the other hand, the fact that he looks vulnerable still, he is fighting a southpaw with a good straight left hand, and that's put him in kind of the, you know, he's active against a guy like that. Might that not be an advantage against Pacquiao in a, in a rematch? But what, what I'm just, what, what's, uh, I'm concerned about, Marquez seemed to have lost just a little step in his speed, mm -hmm. and you can't do that with a guy like Right here, you can see Hawker landing little short punches here. Not enough power on him, but still, he's became he a much bigger. Hawker's a corner, Jose Reyes here, the cut man with that uh, cut under control over Hawke's left eye. In the fifth round of a scheduled 12-rounder here at Dodge Arena in Hidalgo, Texas, Fran Charles alongside Emmanuel Stewart and Max Kellerman. And this was supposed to be a rebirth here for Juan Manuel Marquez. He's got his hands full. He does, but I'll tell you what, should he come out with a win here, I think this is more in his interest than it would have been to just chase a guy around for 12 rounds. The well, opponent is fighting him perfectly, and especially if he's looking forward to fighting Pacquiao. He's got a watered-down version of Pacquiao right here in front of him. This is why some fighters don't watch tape, and Haka says he doesn't watch tape of his opponents. Because maybe the guy on the tape isn't the guy you face. Well, gamesmanship maybe there by Marquez Haka who wanted to make sure everything was all good Marquez wouldn't touch gloves and now Stop. there's a cut Stop. Time neutral corner right there right there Come over on. the right eye. It's a gash and it's and it's bleeding It's kind of spouting blood. I think it came from a punch accidental shoot. Headbutt. Accidental uh. accidental 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 headbutt. All right, referee Lawrence right. Cole says it came from an accidental headbutt okay. Because it's a very hard, uh, bad cutter when you see two heads bumped together. That's what happens when two skulls crash. The flesh in between gets busted. Very bad cut. I'll tell you what, if Harold's scorecard's right, that puts Marquez in some trouble. And Marquez, you can tell, sensing he doesn't want the fight to be in danger because of the cut. Going to work here in the fifth round. This is the fifth fight that we know of with Haka where headbutts have been an issue. We have not seen Marquez in his career except for the Pacquiao fight vulnerable. And that's, it's that kind of invulner invulnerability that has made him perhaps less marketable than, say, Barrera, who seemed more human through the years. Blood now. Come back from, a, from a, a, a bad cut over his eye. Down perhaps on points. Yeah, see what happens. To beat a guy, that will go a long way towards making him a more popular fighter. Marquez shot a big volley trying to, you know, get even after getting cut. And now that he's trying to take a little break, Hawk is trying to take control again. Blood streaming down the right side of Marquez's face. Cards to determine a winner. Power punches in round five, about even. Marquez landing 14 of 43, Haka 12 of 40. Nice right hand from Juan Manuel Marquez. Sometimes when fighters aren't good anymore, as good as they used to be, you find out if they're great. And Marquez, though he has some wins against guys like Derek Gaynor and Manuel Medina, has never had the signature win against a top guy. He drew with Pacquiao. He lost to Freddie Norwood. Controversial. Rock Taka there with two rights. Some, should he win dramatically here, that's something new in his portfolio and I think raises his profile among 
the top fighters in this weight class. And he does seem to be fighting harder since the cut. And he's, to me, landed more punches in the fight, clean punches, than Hata. But Hawker still seems to be so relaxed and seems to be very comfortable with the situation. And he's been able to take all of the power shots from Mark Hayes. Which means that it could be a tough fight for Marquez as he goes down the stretch. Well, it wouldn't be a dramatic win if it wasn't against a determined guy. Yeah, Marquez is fighting very determined. I'm very impressed with that. But I'm also equally impressed with this young guy who seems to be unawed about this pro Mexican crowd. When particularly they're excited about what after what happened with Pacquiao in the Mexican last week. I mean, showing some maturity, man. A lot of maturity. Yeah. It really is. He's getting hit, and it doesn't seem to be taking the fight out of him. Pockets. Manny, it was only a couple weeks ago where your fighter. Good right hand. Good right hand. Marquez landing flush upstairs on Jim Rex Haka. Very determined fighter. Now, I like what Marquez is doing. He used to throw that long one, too. And Hopper was getting out of the way of it, but now he's just getting close to shooting a right hand lead off the back now instead of the one two. And he's been more effective. There it is again. By shooting the right hand without shooting the left, he's been more effective, and Hopper can't time it. The blood streaming down on the right side of Marquez's face. You see him wiping it off. In between, firing big shots. Fellas, safe to say, not what we expected. Here we see the head butt that caused the, the, the bad cut right there. You see the blood coming in immediately right after the head's clash. And Manny, not unusual. You have a conventional fighter taking on a softball and Second fighters time. trying to get in. Off and no. a straight right hand. And maybe that's one of the reasons Haka's still around this late in the fight, despite the fast pace. All right, we are through six rounds. Harold. Right hand, and he's winning these rounds. But I want to say something. You were right about we go to the score cuts after the fourth round. The case, you know, the fight is stopped by that cut. But I got to say this. If the fight is stopped in the middle of the round, you score the partial round. So therefore, you got to start fast in every round. Make sure you don't lose the first half, because you got to score that partial round. Four to two, Marquez. Marquez catches Haka with a left uppercut. Haka has a good chin. That's the only reason he hasn't been knocked out because Marquez is coming with good punches. And Marquez punches good with both hands. Even though he punches good with the left hook, he has a good right hand. But Haka just takes a good punch. Not only is this the kind of fight that will endear Marquez to the fans, but maybe it will make other top fighters think that he's more vulnerable than he used to be and therefore make it easier to make some of those top fights. Well, that is truly the case, I believe. I think he's, he gets hit a little bit more than he used to, but he's fighting a lot more, too. Haka yeah. momentarily there uh, thought he got hit low. Lawrence Paul was having it. Uh, nice uppercut by Marquez, and then he does a nice job of stepping back to get some separation, and he comes back with a left. I mean, for Marquez, he just landed a right uppercut from the outside. In trouble. Juan Emmanuel Marquez, as I mentioned, he lost two fights ago. Unanimous decision to Chris John in Indonesia. He counterpunched his way through that fight, even though he thought he won it. In his last fight against Turtsak Chandang, we saw this type of effort from Marquez. He's fighting a very good, exciting, power punching fight tonight. He's very determined. The fight was stopped in the seventh with Marquez winning. Marquez, the Norwood fight, most people thought he won. He lost the decision. The Chris John fight. Should be said also as we watch Marquez and you think about Pacquiao. People are talking about Barrera in a rematch with Pacquiao. Barrera got knocked out in five rounds. Marquez drew in a fight I actually thought he won. Many people did. He didn't lose to Pacquiao, he drew. It was two and a half years ago, though. Yeah, but since then, you know, Barrera got blitzed. Morales got blitzed twice. The second fight. Your 
Okay, okay. The second bite, okay? The second bite. What is it? Come in! Box! All right, Lawrence Cole letting us know the second accidental headbutt. And you can see once again, Marquez wants to take matters into his own hands. Haka standing right there with him going toe to toe. But Haka came right to him as he uh, sure uh, met him punch to punch. What an exchange. What a great exchange. Is, you know, Haka's going right to him. He's not taking it easy. Both guys are meeting each other head on. Blood streaming down his face, Fred. Down Mar uh, Marquez's face in a furious exchange with a determined and contender. If, if they go to a scorecard, based on what I'm seeing, Marquez still could win the fight, possibly. Well, he's not trying to win on the scorecard. No, they're going for the knockout. Both guys. Marquez sensing the danger with the cuts. Blood now covering the right side of his face. Right there. Come here. Come on. Come on, Wani. You have like how many guys? You're ahead on the scorecard. Okay? When you see, when you see, how many people do I got? Go on up. Alright. Hang on. Come in! It's a little odd there. Lawrence Cole telling yeah. uh, Marcus he was ahead on the scorecard. Definitely odd. I, I'm very sad about it. I don't recall ever hearing it. He's basically telling him, he, it sounds as though he's implying if you decide you don't want to fight on because of the cut, you're going to win. And Marquez, to his credit, wants to fight on. That's no small thing, folks. His face is ripped open, well, how, and he wants to fight on. How could Lawrence Cole have any idea what That's the scorecard said? I don't know how he can know, and if he did know, it's very unusual. It seemed like out of order for him to tell the one of the boxers that is, but it's that happen. happens. There's happen. There are going to be headbutts. By the way, I said fighters would quit in an open scoring system. There are, there are pros and cons to open scoring. That is a potential con that fighters with less heart than Marquez quit knowing they were ahead in the fight. And a lot of fighters, once they realize that they are comfortable here on points, they would just actually run the rest of the fight, even if there's no cut involved, just on points which is what you see a lot in international amateur boxing, which makes it so boring now. Once a guy finds out he's 7-2 ahead, he says, oh, I got three more rounds to go, I just run. Listen, to Marquez's credit, he's not looking just to win, but to win in a way that will kind of tip the scale away from Barrera and towards him in terms of public demand for a Pacquiao fight. And he's got four more rounds to go altogether. Just the fight is still just a third of the way to get still left to go. That's a long time when you're bleeding like that. And the guys, uh, a point that was just brought to my attention from the truck, Marquez may not have even known what Lawrence Cole was saying. He may not have understood him. Good point. You see Hockham wanting to take advantage of the situation. Marquez is corner, doing a nice job on that cut because it is uh, hardly as much of an issue, the blood that is, as it was in round eight. Really nice job, you're right. Uh, Nacho Bernstein happens to be his trainer, vet man, and manager. You know, doing it all, huh? And has been his manager since he was a kid, I guess when he was about eight or nine years old. He's been always the, the boxing guy in his life, for he and his brother Raw. Rafael. Rafael. Haka now trying to do some work against the ropes, and he comes back with a strong left hook to the body. Oh, big left hook by Marquez. He doubled up, and it floors Haka. Surprise! I don't think Haka knows where he is quite. No, he probably didn't see the punch. But it seemed like he was aware, but just 
totally just confused. That's a Sunday punch, Manny. The left hook. When he catches you with the hook clean, you gotta go. Great, great victory for Marquez. Jim Rex Haga seemingly was taking everything that Juan Manuel Marquez had to offer until he got caught with a double left hook. Well, after this victory, I would love to see Marquez get a super fight with Pacquiao. Win or lose, he deserves it. Has he tipped the scales for you away from Barrera and towards fight compared to Barrera's last victory? The public would probably want to see Marquez now more so than Barrera, which I wanted at first. And there you see the knockout right there. And watch it with the left hand from Marquez. Doubles up, and it was the second one that put Hako on his seat, and he didn't move from that point on. Hey, you might be wondering, why isn't he trying to get up? I think it's a case of him just being not knowing where he is. The featherweight champion of the world, Juan Manuel Marquez.